so one more thing we can look at is right suppose i give you uh, let's say i'll i'll do the reverse now i'll give you an octal octal number and i want to convert it to a hex hexadecimal number right so let us look at i'll give you a number 72 to base 8 okay so all we have to do right is of course one way like i said is to take this number convert it to decimal what is 72 to base 8 it is 7 into 8 power 1 plus 2 into 8 power 0 7 8s are 56 plus 2 which is 58 right and then you can take 58 and convert it to its dec uh, decimal value. I mean the uh, hexadecimal value, right? So you take 58 and then divide by 16, um, right? So if you take 58, um, 16, so this is just 48 plus 10, right? So this is 48, 16 times 3 and uh, A you will get 3a to base 16. Please work it out and check for yourself. Take 58, divide by 16. First time you divide, you will get 48, right? 16, 3 is 48, quotient is 3 and uh, uh, the remainder is 10, right? And therefore, that is just 3a. So, now what you can do is, instead of this, you can take 72 and simply write out the binary binary value of this, right? So, one very important thing to do is to by heart this table here that I have written. This table is very criti critical. You must remember in your head the 16 numbers 0 to 15, right? And their 4 bit binary representations. A is 1010, right? B is 1011, right? F is 1111. So, this is something you should just by heart. It should be in your head. And most importantly, uh, I strongly advise that you make sure you are able to mentally calculate many of these things easily. You cannot be relying on a calculator to get every single number right in this. Otherwise, you will just lose a lot of time in the exams. So, what you do is you take 2, which is nothing but in 3 bit binary 0, 1, 0. Okay, why? Because it is here. This is 2, 0, 1, 0, right? And then I have 7, which is 1, 1, 1 in 3 bit. Okay, so therefore, the, the octal representation of this is just, I mean, the binary representation is just this, okay? 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Now, if I want to convert this to a hexadecimal number, what do I do? I write out 0, 1, 0. And then groups of 4. I append 2's here, I have 2 zeros so that I get 8 bits, right? And then the 1011, right? If you go back to this table here, 1011 um, is here, right? So that is nothing but uh, oh, no, 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 I think I got it wrong here. This should be 1010. I am sorry. This should be 1010. So I come here and then 1010 is here, which is A. Right? And therefore, this is A. And then 0011 is obviously 3. And therefore, this is equal to 3A to base 16. And that is what we got going from octal to decimal and then coming back to the hexadecimal representation right so with that we have really looked at you know all relevant number systems and the you know con interconversion between each one to the other uh, counterpart okay so one uh, sort of just to uh, summarize some of this discussion right we know what a bit is. A bit is a binary valued number. Okay. Where each, 
each of this can take the value 0 or 1. Okay. Now, you don't always deal only with bits. Okay. So, if you just look at your computer, right, a lot of you might have heard of this term, is it a 32-bit computer or 64-bit computer and so on. So, typically, you don't deal with just one bit, you deal with a group of bits. Okay. It's a group of bits that we are dealing with and therefore, you can deal with either 8 bits, right? Or you could deal with 16 bits, 32 bits and so on, right? So, 8 bits is basically called a byte, okay? 16 bits is, is called a word, okay? 32 bits is called a double word. Right now, this these definitions can vary slightly. Okay, uh, for example, in C programming, a character right is eight bits. It's it basically occupies one byte, right? An integer could be four bits, eh, four bytes, right? Or it could be a thirty-two bit number. In which case, it would be four. Uh, it would be thirty-two bits, and therefore would be a double word, right? Uh, a short int could be sixteen bits. But these could be compiler dependent, but typically, you know, we use this kind of a hierarchy of, uh, you know, groups of bits, the byte, the word, the D word and so on, right? So, one other important uh, aspect to keep in mind with respect to um, the digital logic, right, is the use of these words kilo, right, mega, uh, giga and so on. Okay, so what I will do is I will just put down some of these uh, terms, right, and what they mean in decimal, what they mean in binary, okay, something to keep in mind, okay. So, kilo, the word kilo, right, in if you say 10 kilo ohms, right? It means the value is 10 into 10 power 3. So, 1 kilo, okay, is 10 power 3 in decimal, right? But here, if I say 1 kilo byte, it means it is 1024, okay, which is equal to 2 power 10. So, when you say 1 kilo byte, right? In binary digital logic, everything usually is normalized to powers of 2, okay. And therefore, instead of 1000, right, you will actually go to the nearest power of 2, which is close to 1000, right, which happens to be 2 power 10, and that is 1024. So, therefore, this is the kilo here. When I say the memory is 1 kilobyte, it means there are 1024 bytes. Okay, like uh, likewise, one mega, right, is ten power six mega ohms is ten power six, but here it is one zero two four cross one zero two four. Okay, it is two power twenty because one zero two four is two power ten and so on. Likewise, giga, right, is ten power nine. But here it is 1024 power 3 and therefore it is 10 to power 30, right? So, uh, this is something we must just keep in mind. The, the context of kilo will be very clear from the problem that is being asked, right? Uh, and you will not encounter resistances and all that stuff in this course. So, therefore, there is, uh, I don't think there will be any place where you will be confused between the kilo usage of in the decimal system and the binary system, right? So, we will be dealing mostly with this representation in the entire course here, okay? So, with that, I will stop.
this lecture here and in the next lecture we will look at the signed representation of numbers right because till now we have looked at only positive numbers and some fractions we also need to look at negative numbers thank you